What's up everybody, Dirtbag Gaming here, the channel for Casual Raiders. We are going over Faction Wars 21 um, Sacred Order today. So I was able to complete it uh, finally, uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you kind of like the gear that we had, the, the champions that you used, but clicked on the video, probably because you saw that there's no legendary champions that we used uh, in this faction. I only have one legendary champion, and that is Errol. Uh, if you haven't seen his video, go check it out, it's awesome. He hits really hard in PvP, uh, and he just one-shots everybody. In, in this content, he dies too easily, because he's mainly built for that PvP content. So we kind of got rid of him. We put in a rare, actually, instead, to kind of carry us through Faction Wars 21. So we'll start off by going with uh, our lead, which was Mother Superior. Now, if you're surprised uh, that we actually used this girl, uh, check out her video. We're going to post it um, of, like, what gear we use on her while she's good and other stuff if you're newer to the game uh go use her she's pretty cool but she is what we replaced with our uh legendary champion it was a uh level 50 uh rare support champion so uh the, the gear that we used for her all you're focused on her is literally getting up as much hp and speed as possible because she doesn't need accuracy she doesn't need crit she literally only needs hp and speed so her HP starts at 11,000, so it's kind of hard to really multiply that up. Uh, it's not like a level 60, but with her, we have HP uh, gloves. Now, if you look at the gear, it's really good because I took this off of another champion, and I just put it on her. Uh, didn't spend too much silver because I just kind of like transferred it. And then we'll transfer it back right after we're done uh, the video. But we have HP for the uh, gauntlets with speed. Then we have HP with speed. And then we have speed with HP. <laughs> and then guess what? Speed. Uh, and then HP. Look at that roll for HP. That is probably the best roll I've ever had on a uh, uh, headpiece. And then uh, HP with a uh, little bit of attack, but speed. So notice everything has HP and speed. The ring, we got HP uh, with percentage roll. And then we have HP. I wanted the resistance, but obviously we, we got accuracy because the game hates us with rolling. But uh, really just HP. Um, the, if you have her level 60, I wouldn't suggest level 60 because you don't need to. I literally just did it level 50. Um, you can go HP uh, banner with as much speed as you possibly can get on the banner. Okay, and then we're going into the skills. So obviously you want to get her book. Uh, she's going to heal a lot. So we have a bunch of extra heals. Percentages here. The cooldowns bring down to 310 cooldown. That's why if you have... Um, Faster speed, uh, this will definitely help out. She heals an ally by 30% of this champion's HP. That's why you want to get her HP up as fast as possible. Place a shield buff equal to any surplus heal for two turns if the target's fully healed. So her partnered with uh, this guy, brand new, um, is going to be awesome because if he's fully healed, she actually puts up a shield uh, on top of the heal. So she heals for around 20 some thousand. Uh, HP has a rare, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then it puts a shield up. So she's basically putting up buffs as well as her A3 puts up a continuous heal and a shield with the fully, uh, uh, full HP. So that's two more buffs that you're putting on your Inquisitor for him to actually ignore 100% of the target's defense. So he actually hits really hard with her uh, in it. So why you bring in her also is because of the speed lead. All my other champions that I used, I took out my Aethel. You can use Aethel, but I took her out. And I put in the speed uh, lead aura to kind of help my guys go faster. So I took out her, I took out her, I took out Armager. Armager, if you don't have Phoenix, use Armager, um, because the block revive, that just makes this faction so much easier. Uh, so I took out Aethel, I took out her, I took out Armager, I took out my Legendary, and I ran the faction with uh, Inquisitor, Lightsborn, Cardinal, Phoenix, and Mother Superior. So obviously the Cardinal, you can switch out Cardinal for uh, the other person that revives, I forget her name. She is right. All right. So you can revive two random allies uh, with her. And she puts a heal if she crits, but really you're, you're bringing her to be super tanky and, and that. If you want other healing champions, like bringing out these, these epics you can. He puts up some shields now, he's a newer guy. Uh, but really, if you're just going to do it, I mean, you can bring her, but she's an epic. It's so much easier. I leveled up her to 50 just because she's a rare. So you don't need to waste your epic books on her. Uh, it's not really like you're wasting the, the rare books on her. Uh, but 
that's what we went with. So my Cardinal, if you haven't seen the Cardinal video, she's in immunity. I didn't change anything about her. She's literally just super tanky. <laughs> her total stats are 54,000 HP, 4,400 uh, defense, 183 speed, uh, no crit, no crit damage, resistance could be higher, uh, and then accuracy. So this is kind of the stats you just want to super tanky. I brought her an immunity set uh, for skills, uh, fully kitted out, and her mastery is going all the way down to this one to kind of boost her turn here. So any, uh, whenever a hero drops below 25%, Boost the turn rate by 20%, which is huge, uh, especially if you're uh, on a reser. This is just to be more tanky in the defense tree and you want to get faster. You kind of bring lower steel and uh, increase speed by 8 for each dead ally. Perfect for this champion. Uh, the next person is Light Swarm. We just did a video on him. I'm not sure if it posted yet, but it will be posted soon. Uh, we upgraded his gear to be in Light Swarm, or not basically in uh, Life Steel. Uh, we got 60 crit rate because he does hit hard. We have defense, chest piece, look, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 uh, a couple 16s. Speed boots uh, with crit rate. We have defense with speed, uh, HP with um, speed, and then uh, speed for the, just to get him faster. We, we changed out this, so we put in an accuracy, because trust me, you're going to need accuracy for the final boss and some of the waves. So if you're going to go with anybody with accuracy, put it on Light Sword. He has uh, crazy skills for it. Uh, crit damage for this and defense for the ring. His total stats are looking at 34,000, 3,500 defense, 204 speed, which is really good, almost 100% crit rate, 128% crit damage, and 209 accuracy. This worked with 209 accuracy, so if you get around there, you're good to go. Uh, his skills fully kitted out, but A1 uh, three times with, uh, what's it called? Giant Slayer. So bring in the, the Giant Slayer so that way you can get the more damage. Uh, three hitter also decreases target's turn meter, so also works on the boss. This one is clutch, decreases the speed and attack, so that way the adds and uh, the boss hit like nothing, like little, little wet noodles. And uh, plays the fifty percent increase or decrease attack and decrease speed, so just places it not a percentage, uh, just places it three turn cooldown. And this also helps place the increased defense and revive on death. This also pairs great with Inquisitor. He's putting up two buffs. Uh, he's putting up, where is, where is she? She's putting up two buffs and she's putting up uh, increased defense for her heal. But I mean, it's it's very, very paired well with the Inquisitor. Uh, I think, I don't know if I showed you her skills if you don't know her, it's heals and uh, defense. This just puts up a poison and this res everybody puts them up at a full turn. I think you know what Cardinal does. All right, uh, that was Light Sworn. Uh, his masteries are going down the defense tree. And this is basically my clan boss build. To go all the way down to uh, Giant Slayer. And finally, we have Fenix. So, Fenix is the person I just love with 60. I tried my 50. He just died way, way, way too fast. So we actually put on an HP uh, chest piece for him. So, I just took this off of my uh, Miscreated Monster and I put it on him real quick. So, it has speed, resistance, accuracy. He needs accuracy. Look how much accuracy we got on him. Awesome. Uh, crit damage, because I wanted to hit hard uh, with the crit rate roll. We have crit rate, speed, crit rate, HP. So HP was great for him. Uh, crit rate, speed, and obviously speed boost with crit rate. Then we have accuracy banner. I actually switched this from uh, Gither Wars. But notice that like I'm just switching all these just to get the faction wars done. That's okay if you do that. Uh, if you're really going ham on uh, faction wars like 21, change the gear in. Like, if you have silver, change it around, do it a couple different times, a couple different ways. And then once you complete it, then you can take the gear off and put it back on the champion that you used, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, we have crit damage for the uh, neck, and then HP with HP roll on the, on the ring. I just wanted him to get a little bit more HP. That's kind of why I went with a little bit of HP rolls. His total stats are 267 accuracy, 98% crit, 188 crit damage. Uh, 189 speed could be higher, but fast enough. 3,200 uh, attack and 37,000 HP. His skills, if you don't know, he's not really booked out. No, he has one book. I think that was from uh, another Phoenix that I, I used with him. <laughs> but his skills are awesome. So this is kind of why you bring them. You attack one enemy, plays an extra hit with any debuffs. So you have a lot of people to, de to debuff on your team, especially Light Sword. Uh, and then he kills somebody and it blocks with that. He hits really hard and he blocks with my champions, which I will show you how you beat this faction. 
Then we have attacks on enemies has a 75% chance of placing a block buff debuff for two turns. Place a block cooldown skills uh, for one turn if this does not place a block buff. So basically, it's awesome for wave two. So that way you can't put up the unkillable with the man eater on uh, the waves. So this definitely comes in clutch uh, with all the waves. It is a five turn cooldown, but he's, he's fast enough to kind of do it every, every wave. Uh, and then his A3 is also really good. This is the only decreased defense that we have in this team. So this definitely helps with the boss, helps with the, the add, helps with the, the add on the right that you're really trying to kill as fast as possible. And it decreases the speed, which is always great for the boss. So this is kind of why, why we bring him. Notice his, uh, his great masteries here. So we were able to do this with no masteries. Uh, obviously, if you want to get down, bring in uh, either Helm Smasher or uh, uh, War Master, just because of PvE. So you're probably going to get War Master. It's the Helm I mean, it's probably up to you. Get, get one of those two uh, for Phoenix. And then uh, we want Accuracy because we did want him to hit some stuff. Uh, you can go with the Evil Eye and um, uh, Master Hexer to kind of increase the, the debuffs and possibly even uh, Sniper to place uh, the decreased speed and the decreased defense and stuff like that. So that's how I would go with the uh, offense tree. I don't need to anymore because I completed back to 21. So we're good. We can stop using FedEx unless we use them in an ice column, which I probably will. And finally, who else <clears throat> did we miss? This guy. So we just did a video on him, Inquisitor Shim Shimmel. Basically, uh, we've got all of his masteries, brought him down to crit damage because he doesn't need to ignore defense at all because with the buffs up, he ignores all the defense in the world. We got him a little bit faster and uh, sniper and make sure that he has accuracy so that way you can put up the troop gear on the axe. He actually put up a ton of troop gears during these waves, which was sick. Uh, and his skills, we have no books. So no books yet in his skills. But his skills, let's go over them. So A1 uh, attacks one enemy. Uh, watch this guy. He's very, very cool. Attacks one enemy has a 50% chance of decreasing the duration of a random debuff. So works a lot. Uh, and then counter attacks with this skill each time the enemy places a debuff on an ally. Plays a counter attack will only deal 50% of the normal damage. So anytime, anytime a debuff is on your on your people, he basically just shoots the other person in the face. It's awesome. It's hilarious. Sometimes they really run up and hit you with a melee attack, and he literally just shoots them like point blank in the face right next to you. It's, it's very funny, uh, like imagery <laughs> when it happens. And then his passive, which is also great for this faction war stage is each critical hit fills his target's turn meter by 7.5%. Whenever an ally receives a fear or true fear buff, uh, this skill will instantly remove that debuff and fill the ally's turn meter by 50%. So he basically is boosting your, your people's turn meter. He's removing the fears from the final boss, and he's also shooting them in the face while they place it. So this is one of the best passives, I think, in the game, that if you're going into PvE and there's a lot of... Uh, uh, people that put up fears or true fears, uh, it, it's just not there. It, it will never happen with this guy on the team. That's kind of, that's kind of why I leveled him 60 really fast, because I wanted to get done Faction Wars 21 with this faction. The aura is really good for Doom Tower. Increase accuracy in Doom Tower by 60%, or 60, so. Cool, okay, I forgot to go over A2. His A2 is what he's known for. So if you buff up the team uh, with her, he's putting up, she's putting up two buffs on him, he's putting up two buffs on him, uh, he can put, she can put up a buff, but he always, he already starts with a buff with the shield. So I gave him the 15% HP shield every round. So he's already starting off with a buff. And he usually just one shots. He attacks one, one enemy three times, but he ignores 100% of the defense. Uh, and, and if he kills somebody, he puts up a true fear on the rest of the team. This actually happens a lot. Because he kills people very, very easily. So that uh, masteries, we went down to obviously... Uh, Crit damage one because he doesn't need Helm Smasher and the accuracy. We went all the way down with the accuracy tree. Armager again, if you bring in him instead of Fenex, just make sure he gets he's tanky, he, he's fast, uh, and he has accuracy. So that way he can uh, do his decrease turn meter and he can uh, block revive on the minutes. So I made a couple of videos because we actually ran Faction Wars a couple times, but only have two keys left. So let me get this video set up and then we shall go through it together. Okay, so I recorded myself. He's behind me right here. So if you see him kind of peeking his head out, ignore him. Uh, I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger so that way it doesn't distract you guys too much. But this is the setup. So we brought in uh, hers the lead, the uh, the new rare, not new, but the rare, uh, level 50. We have Fenix at level 60. We have Cardinal at level 60. 
uh, Inquisitor 60 and obviously Light's more level 60. So this is kind of the, the setup. And then when we're going into it, she obviously gives 13% um, extra speed. So when we're starting off here, we, what are we trying to do? We're, we're really just trying to look how much heal, healing that she does. So her being the lead, they're, they're obviously super fast, but she's putting up this so that way Inquisitor has three buffs and ignores 100% uh, of the defense. I want to block revive the guy on the, on the right because he does come back and he actually hits really freaking hard. There you go, there's the block debuffs and uh, here comes Inquisitor. So Inquisitor's going to try and shoot. Look at that. Three hit, I'm going to pause this. Three hit, kill the guy, puts up true fear on everybody else, so it definitely controls the waves, but he just hit for like 90 some thousand uh, because he had three buffs up on himself. So he ignores 100% of the defense. So, Cardinal then is going to put up another buff on him, increase defense, uh, so that way, again, he is going to ignore 100% on uh, the next go around. She, let's see her heal. So she healed for 21,000. Her HP is based off that heal. And look at the shield. Like, the shield is literally half of his health. So she, she's just so good for this faction. All right, so then we're kind of slowly getting this guy down so that way we can block revive him. But he does it hard. If that shield wasn't on, might have just one shot him. So there was another three hit. I didn't kill her, so I didn't get to place the, the fears. But he did block revive. It doesn't matter about her. So we're going to kind of slowly get this guy down so we can block revive him. He's going to do some damage. The decreased defense is from Phoenix, but we're going to boost up his uh, his adds or his uh, buffs. So there you go, block revive. So now he, he didn't get back up in either case. Heal him. So now we got two healers on the scene, which made it so much easier. So I think next go around, he should be able to hit a lot harder. Phoenix isn't hitting as hard as I thought he would. Three times, put up the, the true fear right there, heal him back up. And then I'm just using the A1s uh, just so that way we can get through this wave, get to the second wave, fully good to go. Lightsborn is decreasing the turn meter, so it makes it a lot easier, especially for single single ads. Slowly, slowly, again. she's just going to do A1. <laughs> Phoenix is going to do A1. And then this ad should be done. So we'll get to the side. Right, so the second wave, there you go. Second wave, we start off by aiming for, we're going to put up the buffs again. We're going to try and hit the man eater a couple times. And then we're going to decrease defense on the man eater. So that way he does hit hard. And then he ignores 100% of the defense. So there you go. We didn't kill him, but we did do a crap ton of damage. Now we're slowly just picking him off. Uh, she's going to heal him back up. Shield. But this sucks because he puts up uh, block buffs, which I can't now put it on him anymore. So now we're just kind of trying to kill him. He, Fenix does put up block buffs on the other team though. So we're going to try and do that so the way he can't put up the uh, man eater buff. So you go. AOE. That's why you need accuracy on him. Uh, stop the cooldowns on those three in the back. And then block buffs on the front too. So now we can kill the man eater without worrying about it. I can't put up the, the buffs because I have block buffs on, on me. We're gonna heal. We can heal, but no, no buff. And then we're slowly just gonna kill that guy. So then we find we'll fast forward a little bit. Now we're focusing on the healer. So if you can kill the middle guy, kill him next. He had he, he's his buff just dropped off. We're healing, healing. She heals for again twenty one thousand because it is, it is it's consistent based off her HP. Heal back up. But th this this run was so much easier with her on the team. When I didn't have her, it was basically every single wave I was going into it, I was 50% or less HP. And then going into the second wave, I just died. So even with Cardinal rising everybody up and everybody going super fast, there's still really low HP. There's not enough heals. She has one heal every 33 turns, and it's just not enough. So bringing in a second healer made this Faction Wars run so much easier. All right, so let's fast forward. We have, we're getting to the end. So once we get down to, I think, Draco, we're going to get down to Draco. Now we're just doing A1s. So A1, 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 getting everybody's cooldowns back up. All right, so let's get back to the boss. So we get to the boss. Now this ad on the right, let me pause it. 
This add on the right is the one we're aiming for. So now that we have the block revive, all we want Fenix to do is literally run in with his A1 after he's very low, it's block revive, so that way it's then easy mode and game over for the, the boss. Let's play this. We're basically buffing up. We are slowing his speed and attack down with, with Light Sworn makes this so much easier. Now, why does it make it so much easier? Is because now they get like white noodle and they won't hit you anywhere nearly as hard. We got three hits, 90 some thousand. Just do more damage. Inquisitor stops uh, Fierce, so there you go. No fear buffs was up on my team. Two people did die. Uh, she died, but that's why we have Cardinal in there. So if you don't have Cardinal, bring in the other chick that can rest people. And I really just want to do more damage to the right right guy. Get him down a little bit more, so that way once we res up Fenix, Fenix can then come in and uh, finish off that, that ad. So that's kind of why I'm not rising up right now. Alright, so then we lost the, the Inquisitor guy. We're going to heal up the Inquisitor guy. Fenix didn't kill him yet. So we want to just get him down. I knew this wasn't going to kill him because I had no buffs up. But if you do have to kill by accident, he's going to get rezzed up, uh, and then we'll just have to kind of start over and do it again. But with, with this heal, with this team, like, you might be able to survive and, and keep going. But it's, 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 I don't know if it's RNG, because your team is good enough to get this done. All right, so now once I res up Phoenix, he's, he's low enough now that uh, I think he can kill him. Because Phoenix actually does more damage with, he, he hits twice. If he has a debuff on him, so he's got two debuffs, so if Fenix comes up, he's going to hit hard, he's going to block him up. That's basically what I'm showing you right here. Alright, so we can do this on the boss, but now we're going to be able to res, so we res up. She heals. Nope, she doesn't. She's going to do a single one. And then he comes in and boom. There you go. Block revive, can't come back. Now we're just focusing on the left pad. Once you get that left ad down, it's literally just put it on auto, and, and congratulations, you beat Faction Wars 21. So we want the decrease speed on the boss, we want the decrease attack, so once uh, Lightsborn can get the decrease attack up on the boss as soon as possible. He has a decreased turn meter on his A1, which is great. She's going to heal up herself, so she doesn't die. There you go, watch this. Oh, no, wrong one. <laughs> um, he's going to run into the boss, put up the decrease attack, and she's going to provide more heals for you. Going back now, it's, it's really like, this is so much easier than I thought, just by adding her and leveling up um, Phoenix. So let's fast forward. We're getting, we get the add down. It's slowly, <laughs> we're at 12 minutes now. So one, once we get the add down, we do want to block revive the, this add as well. Do you want to get her health down, have Phoenix go in and then block revive? So that way the boss doesn't bring it back up. So we didn't do it, but I don't have any other uh, AoE attacks. So we're literally just going to keep hitting the boss until Phoenix comes back around. So Phoenix is uh, coming back around. He runs up, hits her, block revive. Or again, if you have Armager, same as that thing. So there you go. Now we're all the way going down, going down, going down. And that's literally the entire the entire match. He does, uh, he does get rid of the... Uh, the buff inquisitor which is pretty cool so we got rid of that the block damage buff and he just hit so hard so there you go so we we finished it um i have a i have a screenshot uh, you guys know what it looks like but we we finally finished all of faction wars 21 three star everything we did in 15 minutes i don't think that's too bad because it's on manual but again you only have to do it once once you do it once you're good to go so if you guys have any any questions on what people would be good or not, leave it in the comments below. I'll get right back to you. Um, we're pretty quick with the responses. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. We are almost, not almost, we're probably a little bit more than halfway done the Faction Wars. Uh, but let me know what else you want to see. I am now working on Knight's Revenant next because I have a couple uh, 60s ready to go. I'm leveling up my um, the Old Witch. Her. So I took off all of her gear, put her on her. I'm going to take it back off, put it back on her. But uh, Wreck the Draft is probably going to make this run so much easier. 
Uh, and then once we get done that, she just got up to level 60. We're going to do uh, skinwalkers next because I just got my breakfast. So guys, appreciate it. Comment below what you guys thought, if this helped. Level her up to 50. That's it. She's going to help out. And congratulations on completing Faction Wars 21. Good luck with everything. And uh, enjoy the rest of your week.